So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Yarnspirations asked me to design a really quick pumpkin. So for 2021. So I came up with the idea of doing a textured pumpkin because textured is my style and they wanted it to be about a hand size. So my hands are probably bigger than yours but that's debatable right? So what we have is that I use Karen one pound as my options but today on camera I wanna try something different. So I'm going to be using Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. This is called hot sauce. I've done a pumpkin like this before that you've not seen um, that you won't see until actually next fall and I use this and let the colors just transition on its own. So I'm dying to see what this pumpkin will look like in a transitional format. Using a five millimeter size H crochet hook we're gonna work our way through this. This is not too complex and your PDF uh, version will be different. When I uh, design I would design on a document like this and the testers and I work through it. So without further ado Let's grab whatever color that you want to do at the base of your pumpkin and we're gonna begin our journey right now. And we're going to start and we're going to then just chain two. So one and two and that's your beginning chain. Let's do round number one. In round number one the second chain from the hook which is the beginning one I need you to place ten single crochets in it. So just crochet right into it. So one and two and when there's opportunities just go over top of that starting straggler as well. And that, that'll get stuck underneath. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now if you end up with a hole like this what you can do is use this straggler to be able to close it down. So um, when once we get our ten let's just join it to the first. So if you're not sure just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So even though I'm experienced I still always um, count back just to make sure because if you start off wrong then the whole thing's wrong. <laughs> so I'm just going to slip, sti uh, slip stitch to the beginning here. And what I want to do is that I do wanna close this. This is gonna be the bottom of the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna throw, leave this in the tutorial. So I could have chained tighter and that would have uh, eliminated that issue. But if you end up with a situation like this it's better to know how to fix it than it is to, um, to leave it and then have regrets later. It will be sitting down on something but if people are gonna pick it up and hold it it's gonna be a, maybe an issue for you. So just take that straggler and just go directly across and see that will pull that in and then go across. You can also do a magic ring. So people I get it's amazing how many messages I get about magic rings. So if you wanna use a magic ring that's great. So just kinda weave that in several times and then that should hold. And what I would do is just make it uh, force it into a, a little knot so that it'll get stuck permanently. And you can leave the tail on for now and we'll deal with that later. So let's begin round number two. So let's put this back on the hook. Let's begin round number two. So we joined it. So now we have to turn the project and we're gonna work our way in rows back and forth on this thing. And that keeps the pumpkin lined up perfectly so it doesn't have a weird lean to it or a spiral. So you're just going to chain up one to start and in the very first one where you've done the join you are going to apply the following and you're going to apply one single crochet first and then two double crochets all in the same stitch. We're going to be creating a five sided pumpkin so that's why we're doing this. So in the next stitch available to you you're going to then put in two double crochet first. So one and two and then follow that up by a single crochet also in the same one. So let's go through the repeat. The next one is gonna be one single crochet and then two double crochet into the same stitch. This will look like a poppy at the end of this, a five sided poppy. And then the next one is going to be two double crochet. 
followed by one single crochet into the same stitch. So you'll do that all the way around. So the next one is a single and two doubles and the next one after that is two doubles and a single. Please do this all the way around. I'll see you at the end of round number two. So I'm coming all the way around and I've just completed that and I wanna slip stitch to the first single crochet. And let's talk about this before I continue. So in the pattern it states that there is six stitches period 30 stitches. So six is the repeating. So there's five repeats. So there's six stitches per repeat and then there is 30 stitches altogether. So you will notice throughout this pattern is that I give you what the segment is of the repeat and I also give you the total number of stitches around and hopefully that will help you out. Let's turn our work and begin row number three. So let's begin row number three. You're gonna chain up one and if you follow it, see this is the single crochet here. So that's where you wanna start with your single crochet. So single crochet, the next one is going to be a double. The next um, is two double crochets into the same stitch. So we're growing nice and evenly. The next two in a row are each a double crochet. So we have one and two and then the very last one of this um, repeat is one single crochet which pulls it back down. Let's do this one more time. Starting in the next one you're going to single crochet. Then the next one is a double crochet. The next one is two double crochets into the same one. The next two are one double crochet each. And then finally this segment is gonna end with the next one of being a single crochet. Please repeat that sequence all the way around. So coming up around on the end of number three, I'm still staying within the sequence and the very last stitch is right here. It looks like it doesn't belong there but just slam it in and it's a single crochet and you're going to join it to the first single crochet that you started with. Pull that together with the slip stitch, turn your work and let's begin round number four. So let's begin number four. So I didn't want any texture on the bottom of the pumpkin because you're not gonna really see it. So the, the texture doesn't start right away. So if you're thinking there should be texture already, there's not. So you're going to chain one and you'll start immediately right here. Just pull it apart and you'll see it. And it's gonna be one single crochet there. And then it says two uh, double crochets into the next stitch. So one and two and then the next four are each a double crochet. So let's count those out together. So we have one, two, three and four and then to finish off this side you're just gonna single crochet in the last single crochet that you have. So let's repeat the sequence again. So one single crochet in the first, two double crochets in the next, Okay, and then the next four in a row are each a double crochet. So one, two, three, and four. And then finish this si uh, side off with a single crochet. And I think actually the color changed. It's awesome. Continue that all the way around. This is round number four. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm keeping in sequence, single crochet in the last one and then join. And let's turn our work and do round number five. Let's start round number five. You're gonna notice five is gonna keep on appearing because it's uh, more of a, um, a builder in between the texture. So you're gonna chain up one and go immediately into your first one. You don't have to count your stitches, it'll work out and you're going to apply one single crochet into each of the stitches all the way around and please do that and I'll be right back in a moment at the end of round number five. When you get to the end of number five, if you've been noticing where you've been putting the last stitch, make sure that you uh, keep consistent with that. And so go into the last one, slip stitch and let's turn our work and begin round number six. In round number six we're going to be introducing texture and we'll be repeating round number six, well actually five and six uh, for quite some time. So this is the first time number six is in play. So to start number six you're going to then just chain up one and two 
rounds below you want to start with this. So you're going to be starting here in the single crochet down here and you're going to make this into a front post double crochet. If you're not sure just guess. Then the next stitch in the next one right beside it from behind is going to be a back post double crochet. Okay, so then you do the next one front post. So the single crochets are really untouched in between this to provide that extra filler so that you don't see through your pumpkin. And you keep going back and forth like this. And the counts that I did will have everything line up perfectly. Okay, and that's the end of that segment. So how can I tell that this is done? Well each segment consisted of eight um, stitches in round number five. So that means that there's only eight stitches here. So you got front back, there's one, two, front back, there's three, four, front back, five, six, and front back seven and eight. So that means that there is one segment here. So to start with the very next segment here you're going to start with the front post double crochet again and then the next one is a back post double crochet. So you can literally just go around this thing with every other stitch being the opposite of each other right. So front back, front back if you don't wanna pay attention to that. Just make sure that you do end up with your 40 stitches at the end but it will work out for you. So just go all the way around and I'll be right back in just a moment. When you come all the way around the last stitch should be a back post double crochet and you're just going to attach to the top of the first front post double crochet like that. You should have a total of 40 stitches. I've already verified that that's true and so I'm going to then move here. So what we're going to do then is that we're going to, I'm just gonna take you through repeating of five and six just once but you actually have to do it a total of six times and then repeat the fifth row once. So let me take you through five and six one more time and we'll kick you off in that point. So let's do number five. You're just gonna chain up one and you are going to apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. If you're confident in your counts you don't need to count. So just one uh, single crochet in each stitch all the way around and I'll see you at the end in a moment. This is round five once again. So I'm coming all the way around. I'm going to slip stitch it to the first one and then we're gonna turn and do number six. Now six will be easier this time because you can physically see the stitches now that you didn't have to just kind of guess and we're going to start with number six again. To start with number six you're just gonna chain up one and you're looking for the front post double crochet that's sticking out below and that's the post that you wanna play with. So you're just gonna do a front post double crochet around that one and then the back post is next. You just reach behind and grab the back post and stay on the back post. This is ribbing. So now the next one is a front post you can see it and then the next one is a back post. You can't see it but it's there and it's just in behind. So I want you to go all the way around again doing what you already know. So it's front post, back post, front post, back post and I'll see you at the end of this round which is number six. So I finish off number six again. The last stitch should be a back post double crochet if you're keeping in count and then you're just going to join to the front. So I've technically just repeated five and six once already. So from this point in the pattern if you're following right now is in the video you have to do that five more times. So please do five and six five more times and then you're going to repeat number five which is the um, single crochet row. So this is where I'm gonna leave you. So put me on pause now. Repeat five and six. So a single crochet row. So you'll turn, you do your single crochet. You'll come back around and do and do their um, front post back post which is number six and you'll do that five times and then finish with a number five which is then finishing with a single crochet. Please do that and I'll be back in just a moment. So here we go and this is what it's gonna look like right now. Looks like almost a coffee cup holder. Well a little bit bigger than that. So what we have is it's been transitioning in color so I'm really loving that to be honest. And so we're now looking at the right side of the work. We're now starting round number 20. So you should have finished with the round number five already with which is a single crochet round on the on there and I've already turned. 
Let's begin. We are going to be doing drastic um, decreases going forward now to the end. And so how we're gonna do that is that we are going to go and we're going to just chain one. So we have to skip the first front post double that we've been going down to and just go immediately into the back one first. So we're skipping that first one down. And so we're going to do this a total of three times. So that's coming down and then in the front. So there's one of three and you'll do it again. So back and then front. That's two of three and then back in front. That's three of three. Now you're going to skip the next back post here, the next. So now you're gonna skip the next back post here and skip the next front post here and start here. So it's, it's three stitches away and you'll start with what you know. So again starting third one away on the back post and do it again three times. So you have one and then front post and then back post again. This is number two and then the front post and then back post again. This is number three and then the front post. So you will skip the next back post, the next front post and immediately start in the next back post after that and again do it in your sets of three. Please do that all the way around. This is round number 20. When you come back around you are skipping the last back post double crochet and you've already done the skipping when you did it the first time. So you're just gonna immediately just pull on over to the back post double crochet where, where you started. You should be able to count five groups of three. So you see one and then you see a bit of a space. There's two, a bit of a space, there's three, four and five right there. So let's continue then and we're gonna turn our work and do round number 21. In round number 21 you're just going to chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. We're gonna continue to repeat uh, the fifth row which is the single crochet rows. So we're not changing the stitch counts at all. So please do that all the way around round number 21. So I'm coming to the end of number 21 and I wanna slip stitch to the beginning. So you turn your work. Now Nancy our tester recommended at this point to do the stuffing. I waited a little bit longer but if you would like to stuff, uh, stuff it firm but don't stuff it so it's uh, gonna explode. It's not an F-bomb. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get some polyfill and let's stuff that and I'll see you on the next round number 22 in a moment. So let's begin to do number 22. I did come around if you recall. So now I'm on the front side again, the good side of the work. So what I need you to do is to follow the lead and we're going to begin again. So to do this is that we are going to then just chain up one and you're going to skip the first front post double crochet here and it's going to pull over and you're looking for this back post that's in between. And so you're gonna go into that back post and to the next front post so that's one group of two. So then do the back post again. It's gonna get tight for you. And then the front post. And then that concludes that section. So what you're looking for is looking for the next front post here and you're looking for the back post immediately right after it. Okay, so just come on in. So start with the back post and then front post. and then back post and, and front post. And then that's that next group. So please do that all the way around. You'll have five groups as we've mentioned before. So just look for the next uh, front post here and it's the one back post right there. Continue around. I'll see you at the end of this round number 22. Okay when you get back around you're just going to join it to the first one that you had and it was the back post. So it's way over here just pull it on over and then you're gonna turn your work and let's begin 23. 23 is the same as number five so just chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch going all the way around. This is round number 23. And just finishing number 23 just slip stitching, turn your work and let's do number 24. 
So right where we are we're going to chain up one and you're looking for the next front post double crochet right here and you're looking for the back post that's next right after it. So you're gonna go around that back post and then the next front post and then that's that section of the five done. So then you just keep on rotating it. Look for the next front post right here and it's the back post right that is next. That is your next stitch. So keep it as a back and then front post your next. Please do this all the way around. This is round number 24. And now we're gonna turn our work and we're gonna do two together then of 25. In number 25 you're just gonna chain up one and you're going to do a single crochet two together. So going into the first stitch pull through, the next stitch pull through and then pull through all three loops. That's a two together. And you'll keep doing that all the way around until you get around and then you'll just do a join. Leave a long tail though because we are going to secure that in to position in just a few moments from now. So once you're all the way around just slip stitch to the beginning one and I want you to leave a long tail. We need to make sure that we're gonna uh, create the, the shaping of it squatting. So we're gonna do that and we're going to place that through the tapestry needle. So you're just gonna pull this out Okay, and so if you have an open hold then you're just going to secure it and this will be covered by a stem. So if there is uh, any kind of smaller openings it, it will be covered by the stem. So you're just gonna put this onto a tapestry needle and I want you just in a different spot from where this is going down just slightly off but it, near the center go right through and push down and don't stab yourself but go through the center of your pumpkin on this side. And you're gonna pull on this and it's gonna cause it to squat down. So just going into a different spot on the bottom and then go right back to the top and come pretty close to the center of it once again. And now this one is the critical one. So when you pull on this when you pull the slack it's gonna be pulling the front down or the top down sorry. So you're gonna be pulling and just help it just by pushing it down and it will be sinking in the bottom like this. Now using your tapestry needle tie this into a knot so it will hold its position. That's into a good knot. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom and out. And that's the tail end I just wanna hold inside. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut it. And when I reshape it, that little piece will, will have disappeared inside. So now we have this and now we're gonna continue with shaping the exterior next. So now I've just cut a spare strand off the yarn ball. It's approximately around 60 inches, about five feet. And when I put it through the tapestry needle I want to have this tapestry needle directly in half of the whole distance. And therefore what's going around the outside will be double stranded. P so please do that. So this has been folded directly in half and I did cut so that it's d directly in half just in case it was off a little. So I want you to create a little bit of a longer tail here and we're gonna use that later and you just wanna create a slip knot first. So the goal is, is to start at the bottom. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way to the top and come out the center. And I'm gonna pull but I'm not gonna pull all the way through. Okay and I wanna go down through the top once again and I wanna come in through that loop of the same strand. So put that loop through and 
then I'm gonna pull. And what this is doing is it's locking this into position. Okay, and then just carefully and then you can see it like that. Now I'm gonna take the strand and I'm gonna look for the indentation. So you can kinda see it. There's five. So one, two, three, four, and five. So I wanna come directly in between of the indentations. So it doesn't matter which one you start with. So this one is right here and I'm looking for it and I'm just gonna drag it on the outside. I find if you can keep it from twisting it kinda looks better. So you're gonna go back to the top and then back down through the middle. And I need you to do that all the way around. So there's only five sections so that means there's only gonna be five times this happens. Now when you pull it I want you to change the shape. So pull on it so th and then help it a little bit so that it gets its indentation. And you'll see it more and more the more you do. So now you're gonna look for the next indentation. So I'm gonna go right here. And then in and then down the and down the middle again and I need you to do that all the way around so that you have your five sections. So I'll leave that in your hands and I'll be back in just a moment. So now that I've done all five you can clearly see it on the base here because it's a different color and that doesn't bother me at all because it's more artistic than anything. So what you wanna do is secure this in a position just weave in your ends and uh, when you do the tie like I showed you before I went down through the middle and out through another piece and then I just cut it there and then I just shaped it with my hands in order to get it to um, hide in the inside. So this is what I would do. So I'm just going to come out the outside. It could be anywhere and I'm gonna do the same with the starting strands that I started with. You're gonna take that and do the same thing. So please do that and we're gonna start doing the stem next. So let's begin to do the stem. I'm using a taupe color this time instead of uh, the brown espresso color I believe it was called. Uh, let me just double check that. Espresso is what I normally, I, I use in the in the Karen sample. So what we have here is that this is chain 11. So this is the stem. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If you want it longer make it longer. If you and this is the length of the stem. So if you want it shorter you can do that. And so you're just gonna go second chain from the hook and you're going to single crochet yourself across the back hump of the chain. One thing I keep in mind is that pumpkins are not perfect and they're always different shapes. You see that in the pumpkins. Uh, we're in the heart of pumpkin country where we live. Uh, the pumpkin trucks right now, it's now September of 2021. The pumpkin trucks are moving the pumpkins around as they're being shipped abroad and uh, it's one thing that is grown here in Nova Scotia that is grown in abundance. So once you get down you're just going to turn your work, chain one and in the back loop only, stay within the back loop so you get a bit of a ridge, you're going to single crochet. And so you need to finish then, this is second row so go all the way to seven rows uh, for me and we're going to then um, finish off with that. So once this row is done, number two, you're just going to continue with three, four, five, six, and seven and you'll just do the same thing back and forth and meet me back here in just a moment. Once you get your seven rows done, I need you to create a longer tail here. We're gonna use that tail to sew it to the project. But before we do, we wanna pull this loop through and we're going to throw that through a tapestry needle right now. Of course you can do all this stuff at the end if, you were, if you're doing a multiple of these. So you're just gonna put that through and you just wanna come and roll it to the other side. Don't worry about that other strand, we're gonna use that too. So I will only want you to use just one of the strands of the two. Do you see that? and this will keep it looking consistent. So you barely notice that you did this. So you'll come to the next one on this side. So just the back loop and this loop. And 
This is called a whip stitch. So please whip stitch just match your stitches to each other all the way down and I will see you at the base here in a moment. Once you get all the way to the base I want you to just to pull the hook or the needle off leave that holding. Now the other one that's that's left at the top that where we were I want you to be able to gather the remaining sides that are left at the top. So just going around just kind of open it up so you can see it and I just want you to just to weave in and out all the way around and this is the very top of the stem. So the other side is gonna be sewn to the pumpkin itself. So once you're all the way around just give it a good tug and that should pull things as nice in and then I want you to secure it. These pumpkins would be a nice craft show idea. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna let this hold and we'll apply this to the pumpkin. So when I put it on I will wanna put it on with the, with the on straight like this and then I'll just kinda twist it. Okay, so let's move on to the vines next. Okay, both of the vines are done on the exact same way so leave a longer tail again and I want you, vine number one has 21 chains, vine number uh, two has 15. So whatever one you wanna do, if you wanna do both the same size that's up to you. So this sample has one of each. So chain the number that you want, it's either 21 or, tw or 15 and meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm doing the big one first just to get it over with and I'm doing the second chain from the hook now and I need to apply three single crochets in every stitch or every chain going all the way back and this will cause it to naturally curl on itself because there's too many stitches going into one. So three single crochets into each and meet me back here and I am going to do the second one off camera. So the second one for me will be a chaining of 15 and doing exactly the same process. I'll be back at the end of this in just a moment. So I'm coming back around and you can see that it's naturally curling on itself. So once you get to the last one then just pull up a long strand so you can use that to sew it in later to the top of your pumpkin and then do any other uh, vines that you would like to do. If you only wanna do one it's up to you as well and you'll put those together when you're going to sew it to the project. So please do as many vines as you want and we'll be right back in just a moment. So let's begin to do the final assembly and I got everything, all the components ready and this is the strand. The other side was sealed. So you're just gonna come in and you're just going to go into the project and come down into the stem or up back into the stem, sorry. Now pumpkins I said, as I mentioned are never meant to be perfect so you can go for a perfection or you can go for realism. It's up to you. And so what you might wanna consider is literally sewing this so that it actually is into um, an angle so it's kind of like leaning on its side a little bit or you can try straight up. It's up to you. Um, my goal for the crochet crowd is not to tell you exactly what you need to do or in the sense of um, I want to make sure that you have creative, uh, creative license to do what you think is right for yourself. Um, we get a lot of email people asking us for advice and stuff but I think a lot of people know the answer. They're more probably looking for permission than anything. So I wanna circle the whole way around so this will center itself. And once you're all the way around you can safely just stop. Chances are people are gonna pick it up by the stem so you do wanna make sure that it's on nice. And then once you're satisfied with it you can, you can just have it tie onto itself. And then just weave it in and out of the stem a little bit. Okay. 
So I rarely do this amigurumi that has the eyes and stuff but you can always do stuff like that. And then once it's on you can shape it but I would worry about that after you get your stems on so, or sorry your, your vines on. So let's begin to do the vines. I'm gonna do the big one first. So I'm using the two strands that are left and all we just wanna do is we want that to be free. So all, all I'm just doing is just kinda securing it in to the base. So I'm just pulling it through and then I'm just going back into the stem and then pulling on it so it kinda tightens around. And then I'm gonna tie a knot and then I'm gonna take this tail end and I'm just gonna go down the stem a little bit to hide it in. And then back through the vine again. Did I say stem? I, I meant vine. I don't even know. <laughs> okay, so I'm back and forth and I wanna do the same thing with the other stem. So usually things look good in, in odd numbers like threes so if you wanna add any more. So if it did untwist like this, just keep, um, just try again and just kinda twist it and things will come back in balance. Yeah. So now it's just a matter of styling it and I like to twist and I like to kinda turn over as well. You can always touch it up with like hairspray in order to keep its shape and that's something that you can do. So you can see that they're completely almost different in the sense of um, the way that they look but it is the yarn and I probably did not stuff this as much as this one for sure. So you can see it's a little more stout. But that's the whole point of these little patches and that's it for now and have yourself a great afternoon and we will see you again right here on the Crochet Crab. Bye bye.